Let us see, Amane. Shall you crash out? What's up, guys? I'm Hansu, and here we are going to do a breakdown slash live reaction and review to chapter 161 of Golden Model Days, which is known as Shark. And this one's going to be interesting. Notably because this is like an interesting, weird, kind of up-in-the-air sort of character dynamic moment. Because remember, for the longest time, Amani didn't like his dad. Amani didn't love his dad. Amani despised his father. And he only just recently came around with the help of his grandfather. And also, Shishiba didn't... I mean, he did, but he didn't really slaughter Satoru Yosumura. So there's this interesting mix of emotions and characters. And of course, you have the natural rage of a son that learned about the loss of his father. And the natural rage of a student who just told the son of his mentor that he off the mentor whatever this is gonna be super duper interesting so let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it editing me are you ready three two one go what's up guys that guy with a pencil here fun fact to do up into have it on me and keep it on me at all times another fun fact <sighs> that's right i slaughtered satsuno yotsumura Okay! Oh no, I'm excited. Mainly, because here's the thing, right? Even if Amane were to, let's just say hypothetically, let's say he were to hypothetically crash out right now, he went from 0 to 27, and the scale only goes up to 5. In this instance, I don't think he's really cooking Shishiba. Like, I, I really don't. And here's the thing, I still don't fully understand why Shishiba drops this bar right here, right now. Like, of, of all times, of all times to really be dropping a hefty, juicy, scrumdily umptious bar. I don't, I don't really see right now being the time. I don't know. Is it just me? Like, especially considering you just came off from a fire behind collab, something smooth and buttery. You know what I'm talking about? What I'm talking about. So like, it's crazy to me that Yotsumura, not Yotsumura, that Shishiba was like, oh yeah, BT Dubs. Fun fact. Like this low, this feels exactly like. I guess that's spoiler for the DBS manga. So I won't talk about it. But like, there's a certain moment in the DBS manga where a character does something. And I kind of just immediately go, but why though? <laughs> and to be fair, that moment does have context. But like, in this moment, I still don't fully get the context. Like, why are you dropping this bar at this moment, in this time period? But I don't know. I'm interested. I'm very interested to see how this ends up playing out. Because I don't think Omani's dumb enough to crash out. Like, I think he knows that there's levels between him and Shishiba. And ultimately, fighting Shishiba right now, even if it's over his father, would not be the smart play. Amane, especially out of all of the Sakamoto Days crew that's been established from... Oh man, when was the last time Lou did anything? But I, I keep saying that, but I don't know. It's been a minute. I swear it's been like 100 chapters. But... Especially looking at his contemporaries, whether it be Lou, whether it be Hisuke, whether it be Shin... It always feels like Amane's the most rational outside of, like, Sakamoto himself. And even Sakamoto has crashed out before. But Amane, he doesn't seem like the type. So let's see, let's see. Mm, Shishi would just drop. He's not even, like, playing no games. He's like, yeah, I did it. Okay. What are you gonna do? You gonna crash out? Right here? Right now? You, go ahead. Go ahead. Do, do it. Do it right. I dare you. I triple dog day. <laughs> like, that's that's the kind of look he's giving right now. Okay, Shishiba. He's posting up. But let's see. What? What? Oh, I see. Oh, you do? <laughs> well, there we go. No conflict? Okay. I mean, that's fine. I, I'm glad, honestly. Interesting, though. But, you know, let me see. What does he see? Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, that's right, because Amane did... Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, that, you know what? Never mind. I can't even blame you. Technically, and here's the thing, right? By the context of what Shishiba did, even though he did leave the door open, like, I literally at the end of the Shishiba Yotsumoto fight, she was like, your face up to the world now, boss man. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna crush your dome piece. I ain't gonna take your lungs. I ain't gonna do nothing to you, dog. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you float down the river. And then Nagumo found him. But Nagumo never told anybody. That's why Yotsumoto is supposed to be cooked. And I guess since Amane did open the door, he asked. Shishiba's technically doing his duty by answering. I th and here's the thing, right? I am assume it just be too too much like a breach of violations to go any further than that. Because like, he could explain, oh yeah, I beat she, I beat Satoru Yotsumura, but like I beat him to the end, to like the pinnacle. Like he, he's um, on the verge last time I saw him, but I didn't actually take his life. For just general convenience sake, and what was supposed to happen in Satoru Yotsumura was a traitor to the Order and a traitor to the JAA. Shishiba did slaughter Yotsumura. 
that was the whole point of their little interaction. So, I guess, yeah. Amani, he kind of he kind of opened himself up for this one. Uh-oh. Let's see. He's tweaking. He's tweaking. I see, I see the fist gripping. Why? Why did you slaughter him? Because it was my job. You see, it's a matter... Of, here's the thing. It, this definitely falls down to a matter of just, like, miscommunication, right? Like, I mean, I guess because Shishiba doesn't know verbatim. Because Nagumo never told anybody. Nagumo was like, you could be useful to me. You legally are cooked. You hear me? So, like, Shishiba could say there's a possibility he's still out there. But who knows? Maybe he's, like, wired or something. Or he's rigged up to the point where he can't actually say what he didn't do. Because... You may get in trouble for that. Who would be able to, like, and who would, not just who would be able to, but who would be willing to do something to Shishiba, I don't really know. Like, presumably, maybe the other, other? Lord, I'm talking about cows. Maybe the other order members would be like, you failed to complete a mission? Oh, we got some for you, boss. But, like, I'm looking at all the other order members, while Kami, Kami, he'd say, hey, if he's just ordered to, I don't know, I feel like they wouldn't care enough. Nor would they really understand the consequences of the situation, considering they've been overseas for so long. Osoragi views Shishiba as a mentor, and also, I don't think she would care enough to actually turn on him. And maybe this is just the whole mentor-student thing. I still think Shishiba is stronger than Osoragi anyway, so I don't think she would turn around and freak out. Nagumo, he would do it to follow orders, but like he's also a hypocrite of himself. Yotomoro was still on the execution list. Him leaving Yotomoro alive clearly shows that Nagumo isn't entirely loyal to the JAA. And then who does that leave? They'll, like, actually turn around and harm Shishiba. Shishiba's our last order member that we know of at this point, because... What's his name? He always cooked. So, let's see, like, I don't know. I know there... I think there are, like, a few other order members, but I'm not exactly sure who could, like, bring down the band hammer on Shishiba. He would have to do it to himself, essentially. Because I agree, I agree. He's most likely one of the stronger order team members. I give it... I'm leaning more... <laughs> Purely biased, admittedly. I'm leaning more towards Nagumo, because I think Nagumo's kit is a lot more elusive and diverse. I think it could definitely outdo someone like Shishiba, especially considering Shishiba, he's, like, fully organic. We talk about this all the time when it comes to, like, the orphanage kids versus the actual order members. The orphanage kids were raised to be order tiers. Meanwhile, pretty much, I think, like, the only purebred kind of quote-unquote order tier member is Nagumo, because he comes from a spy family, but, like, once again, it's a spy family, not necessarily an assassin family. So you can definitely make the arguments that, like, none of the Order Tier caliber members or none of the Order are, like, organic in terms of... Or not necessarily. They're all organic. They're not purebred. They're not just, like, built to be Order Tiers. They all grew into it on their own. But with that being the case, I don't know. Can anyone cook Shishiba? Eh. Would, any would anyone cook Shishiba? Eh. But let's see. Amani's just like, but why though? Your, your job? But, but you and my dad were close. My dad really trusted you. So then, why? What did my dad do? Why'd you have to slaughter him? Uh oh, uh, Amani. Am I, don't, I, don't, I, I, if you if you need something, bro, no, <laughs> obviously. But that is a good question. And once again. I'm shocked Shishiba was giving up this much. Like, literally, he, he must want something out of it. He must want something out of it. He must be, just, like, trying to test them on it or something. Because he literally could have just said, I don't know. Because, like, Yotomoto hasn't been around in the order for forever. He could have just lied to me, like, no idea. Or he could even just have said classified or something. Like, he could have dropped any number of excuses. But he was explicitly honest in the most roundabout way possible. <laughs> like, it's not necessarily even a lie of omission. He just told the truth in a way. But, like... Shishiba, I think you and I both know that Yotsumura didn't fall. Even if I didn't have omniscient reader powers and know that Nagumo fished him out of the river. Come on now, bro. Let's see. I can't tell you. It's classified. See, then, but then why even bring it up? I mean, I guess because he asked. He asked, and I guess maybe just the slaughter room it, it technically wouldn't be classified. But, like, if you're going to start using classified as an excuse, Yotsumura's whole case should be classified when you think about it. You're telling me the former leader of the Order's ordered execution uh, order ordered but you mean to tell me his execution wouldn't be considered top secret hmm huh? huh? really <laughs> really like come on now, I, I can i see some something, something suspicious something's under 
underlying this. I see you, Shisha, but let me take a sip. The sip was successful, but can't tell you. It's classified. I can't just swallow that. You owe me an explanation. Not now. <laughs> Not really. He does I mean, I guess in a way, like, like I still kind of like an inheritance thing. Like, you sold to my dad. Tell me why you sold to my dad. But like, logistically, Amane, what power do you hold in this scenario? Like, like at all? Like, <laughs> and in this case, in the Sakamoto days case, like, literally, what power? You are an unfinished student, not an older tier member, not even technically part of the JA. You work under Sakamoto now, and you even abandon your daddy, who admittedly abandoned you for good reason. But like, still, I don't know, Mane. I wouldn't say he owes you. he owes you one in like a broad moralistic sense. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really say he owes you one literally. But but maybe this is Shishiba standing me. Let's see, perhaps, but I can't tell you. Ah, so okay, so even Shisha was like, I mean, right, but like, you got hands on, <laughs> that's, that, that's, kind of, that's kind of the thing, it's like one of those days, no one really needs to tell you anything unless you can beat it out of them, and even then, some people will go out before you beat it out of them, <laughs> so yeah, I guess so, <laughs> you, I, I get that you didn't just slaughter my dad on a whim, I'm an assassin's son, at this point, I'm not going to blame you, but I want to know why, okay, okay, so, so, he's on the verge of crashing out, but he's not gonna crash out legit, and, and that makes sense, because, yeah, he, he did grow up in the world of assassination, so, like, he, he would know that there's always a reason, and Shishiba, especially considering he's an order tier, not, I keep saying order tier, because I'm so used to talking about, like, the orphanage kid and Sakamoto and stuff like that, but he is an order member, they don't typically do anything, Unless, like, directly ordered to. Uh, I, I, I order, ordered. It just keeps happening. But it does make sense why Amani is, like, approaching it somewhat logically. Though I do see him sweating. He may be about to tweak. He may be about to strike back. But logistically, yeah, that does make sense. Just on a logical level, you wouldn't do this unprovoked. There must have been some reason. And I don't blame Amani for simply not having the info because, once again... He barely had any context. The man just remembered his dad wasn't actually a bad dad, like, what, in universe two months ago? If that, I think? Because I think the... Actually, no, it may be longer than that. So he, he's had a minute to stew on it and think about what he wants to say to his dad. But, like, yeah, it does make sense. Even Amane's like, dude, I ain't... It's just like, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. So please tell me why I should be disappointed. But let's see. There must be some reason the JA higher-ups... Amane, don't ask me about this. Please. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, he's getting... Ah, oh, he's getting flashed. Oh. Ah, oh, man. Sakamoto Day's characters, dog. Like, notably, obviously, there are things that Sakamoto Day's will get praised for above its characters by leaps and bounds. The action. But, like, with that being the case, the character work in Sakamoto Day's is fantastic, too. And I like this callback. I don't remember if this is a specific moment. I don't. Is this a specific moment that we're calling back to? Did this happen or is this like just a new flashback? Regardless, the parallels of the student and the teacher and the teacher un being unable to give everything to the student due to the nature of the arrangement of the student and teacher. Ah! I know technically Amani is definitely not Shishiba's student or anything, but the legacy is still there. And... You can definitely tell Shishiba, he's not taking pleasure in this. Like, I thought maybe for a moment he was, like, simply testing Amani, but I don't know. He has not smiled once. His eyes look hauntingly serious. He's legit, he's, like, asking him to just bury it. We, we cannot talk about this right now. We will not talk about this right. So I genuinely think this is just, it w maybe even just telling him the truth was, like, a slip-up of Shishiba's character. He was like, I'm gonna be honest with the kid because I respected Yotsumura. And as far as I know, because he hasn't shown up again, at least not in front of me, he's gone. And the kid deserves to at least know that. But maybe even divulging that information was just too much. Like, he shouldn't have even said it. He should have just said, I don't know. He should have just said, it's out of my hands. He should have just said classified. But in a moment of weakness, from knowing Yotsumura as well as he did, and having that connection, ultimately, it slipped. And now he's legit receiving flashbacks to the moment this happened to him. 
Shishiba, don't ask me about this. Please. I told you. Don't get to know your enemy too well. I get it now. Back then, Mr. Yotsumoto was trying to protect me. Ah. Oh. Yeah, history repeats itself. But once again, I guess that is, that is nice. I like what this does. It plays into why, in a way, not even in a way, in a couple ways, but in a way, because then it's not in all ways, that technically X, Zuki, Rion, whatever you want to call them, they're right. Like, the fact that the world, and specifically the JAA and the assassin world, is built this way to where people need to lie, people need to hide things from people that they trust people that they've raised up people that they have some sort of connection to and it's a cycle that keeps repeating generation after generation though admittedly the jaa the order itself is recently established but it seems like the jaa JA traces back a while i can see why they're so dead set on ending it because i bet this could be easily handled if it wasn't classified I bet if Shishiba wasn't under strict supervision and wasn't under technically a tight leash, he probably would just explain the whole scenario. But he can't because of the way the JA is structured. He can't do that. And while I don't think this would suddenly mean that like X <laughs> or Zuki or Rion and their group is right necessarily, or justified because considering how many innocent people they're willing to trample over, I do. I can see how this is something. That is something fundamental about the JA and the assassin world as it is right now. That definitely does require a change. Because as it is right now, Shishiba, the student of Yotsumura, can't even properly explain the scenario to Yotsumura's one and only son because of how the world was built. How the world is structured right now. And that's unfortunate. And now Shishiba's even realizing, like, oh, dude, man, I had this exact same scenario. It's happening to me just like it happened to Yotsumoto Sensei. Darn, dog. <laughs> that's, that's some good that cyclical writing. I do think I know the George Lucas quote gets memed on a whole bunch. Like it's like a, whatever. I forget the first part. It rhymes. That, I, that's the meme part I always hear repeated. But yeah, he's not necessarily wrong. I do think in ways maybe not in the way that the prequels and the original trilogy does it. But like I do agree with that general philosophy. Especially in a story that's about societal issues and societal structures, if not society, structures within a system of things, such as the JAA. I do think having these cyclical stories, these things that rhyme with each other, these repeat instances are important to display why things are wrong with the system. And why the system, regardless of whether or not the antagonist aiming to destroy it, is going about it the right way. It does need to be changed. It isn't a healthy system. It may be a system that works, but it's not a system that should be perpetuated for what it fails to do. It should be augmented. But let's see. What? How did you get back up? What? Bro, wait, didn't you get by well then again, I guess Sakamoto's characters get launched through buildings all the time. Shishiba! Really? He doesn't even look damaged. <laughs> Dude! Did you did you lightly tap him or something? Golly, I thought you body bagged that man last chapter. And now he's back up, Amane. Let me guess, let me guess, let me guess. Yeah, I'm like... No. No, no! You know what the crazy thing is, though? I saw someone commented on a previous review. I forget if it was 158, 159. I don't think it was 160. Someone had commented that it seemed like Shishibo was going to get got. Like, because too many characters were living, like, notably, we've gotten through the whole Gaku scenario, the Gaku versus Nagumo fight. Both Gaku and Nagumo are still alive. Gaku even got revived from the verge of being... So there's that. Then, obviously, both Haruma and Shin survived. Like, Haruma's laid out, but also he survived. And Shin, of course, survived. And, like, even earlier than that, Seiba, both, um... I forget that. I always forget the kid's name. I always forget the uh, mask kid's name. Him and the other girl. I'm sorry. I do not remember. They're minor characters, and I haven't reread that section of the arc in a little bit. But they got spared as well. Perfectly fine. All the named characters have been getting spared. But I really, I don't know. It, it's, but then again, I guess I just like all the Order members. <laughs> I guess that's the crazy thing. I just like them all. Because, like, I don't want to sack any of them. At least not yet. Like... I think this is an interesting character dynamic that we need to see explored more. Amane and Shishiba, this seems like a 
fantastic duo right here. But it looks like... Mm, okay, but he actually managed to draw some juice from Carolina Reaper this time, though. But Carolina Reaper instantly sliced through and cauterized his... Jeez, man. Tear up the cord or something. Like, attack... Attack something. Don't just let him slash you, bro. Golly. But okay, shout-outs to, shout to my boy, though. Shout-outs to my boy, Shishi. But he blitz behind Amane and intercepted this, but he couldn't dodge it perfectly. Let's see. Ah! Son of a... <laughs> Carolina Reaper, you thought things were sweet? You thought things were gonna be light? Some light work? Well, let's see. Uh-oh, Shishiba locked in. Ah, yeah, but he got that gash across his side. That's a... But to be fair, though, that's the first bit of big damage that it feels like anyone's done to anybody. <laughs> it's like, at least in the Shishiba 1v2s, like, that's the first serious hit. He's had the scratches and he has some blood dripping. But, like, this is the first time that someone's actually managed to do, like, a number number to him. Not no light stuff. This is actually doing damage. Which I think is good. I do think that Shishibo was going a little bit too unharmed. And it was kind of selling the threat of the Orphanage kids as threats. Like, if you're able to get 1v2'd by Shishiba and Amane, who has barely any real combat experience... It does kind of kind of speak to a lack of prowess, so I'm not mad at Carolina Reaper getting back up and doing some damage. I think it is necessary, once again, for the integrity of the narrative. Especially after Haruma lost, well, not necessarily lost, but kind of lost, to Shin. I think it is very important to reestablish that, like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, kid, the orphanage kids, it ain't sweet. Because if Carolina Reaper and Kumanomi both had been one-shot last chapter... Then the only orphanage kid we have left, kind of, sort of, is Uzuki. But even then, he doesn't really count. He was separate from the orphanage, somewhat, kind of, sort of. I think he actually is from the orphanage. I forget. But would that be the case? He'd be the only one, and I don't think that'd be good enough. So I do think Carolina Reaper coming back and getting this lick in. It's necessary. It's necessary because once again, I feel like as crazy as this arc has been, as next level as it's been, I feel like this is more of a midpoint arc. Like we may be in the middle of the series. Because we still have so much character progression for other characters that still need to happen. And I think almost every single Order member here is too important to get got. And I think every single Orphanage Kid member is too important to get got right now. It feels like none of their stories have reached completion and none of their powers have really reached the pinnacle. We haven't got to see Haruma fight for real. While Kuminomi's in an advantageous environment with all the metal around her, I feel like it's still... She kind of got messed up by a matchup, not really anything too crazy. And obviously we gave her a whole metallic arm, so I don't think she should be going anytime soon. My boy Haruba. He got he got done dirty by Pin, aka Plot Shin. But even still, like I feel like he's we haven't got to see him fight for real. There's so many things I want to see from the Wolfridge kids. Obviously Gaku too. I want to see Gaku lock in and actually cook. You <laughs> not lock in and get cooked off screen. But let's see. Amon is like, oh shoot. Maybe I shouldn't have been tweaking. But let's see. Oh whoa, 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 whoa. Shishima, get up. She went, no, wait, dude, it was one hit. I mean, to be fair, I, I would also immediately fall over and collapse if my internal organs were ripped out by a actual lightsaber. But, like, dude, you barely did any damage to him and you're dropping from this? You take one serious hit and you fall? Are you a glass cannon, Shishiba? I know he's literally the first thing from a glass cannon. But, like, still, Shishiba, no! Why, why'd you do that? Are you trying to atone for what you did? Amane, help him up! Amane. Amane, now is not the time. I mean, I get it. I get it. You're worried about your pops. And you want him to explain. But dude, now is not the time. Your ops are still up and breathing. And they're likely wise to your tricks at this point, bucko. I don't think... You just... <laughs> they just dropped. Your top ally right now. Even if he kind of is your op, you need him. The enemy of my... <laughs> the op of my op is my ally. <laughs> Come on now. Let's see. Huh. Good question. Hard to say. Ah! Oh, so see, he's, now he's playing into it. But Shishima, now's not the time. Wake up! Get up. Please, Shishima, please! Don't get got here. Run. Amane. Are you really done? He's actually laid out. Wow! I, I, I mean, I maybe. Hold on, let me take a sip. But really, I mean, I, I guess technically we haven't seen Shishiba take that much damage. And obviously this is a lightsaber that got torn through his guts. And let's see, Amani doesn't even say, his wound is deep if I leave him. But 
They're like tar, dog. And I guess here's the thing. He was in the middle of intercepting for Amane primarily. He wasn't act. What the heck was that body? But he wasn't actively trying to like strike properly. He was moving, likely putting his body directly in the way of the attack that would have hit Amane. So like, this isn't a shishi but anti feet, but darn, bro. All it takes is one slash to your tummy. No, no, yeah, okay. But still, golly. Darn it, you idiots. You're gonna perish painfully. Your family and your friends, your pets, your neighbors too. Carolina Reaper, please. <laughs> I get it, you're a tweak master. Right? It's not that deep. It never has been and never will be that deep, my friend. Calm it down. Calm it down. Golly. He really, he really said, like, family and friends, I get it. That, that's pretty common. Your pets, I mean, pets, a lot of people consider their pets their family, and I can understand that. When I had my puppers, they were basically my family, so I get that too. Your neighbors? Your neighbors? <laughs> like, now I think you're dragging it. Come on. What are the neighbors? Like, I imagine, imagine Carolina Reaper shows up to your door and is like, you live on the same street as such and such. Now, you must be lightsabered. What? Like, what did they do? Let's see. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. In a small dark room, I'll carve you up into little pieces while you're still alive. Okay. God, God. What? I don't want to say it's not that deep, because maybe it is. Is it that? Is it that deep? Is it actually properly, truly, and realistically that deep? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. No, it isn't. It's not. <laughs> Dog. I guess, but then again, you know, I got to think about it from Carolina Reaper's perspective. He also is technically fighting to avenge his brother in Club Jam. And also, he did just get knocked through a building by a hammer. So, like, I guess le I guess legally speaking, put me in that exact same scenario. And I also would likely be crashing out to the moon. So, I can't necessarily fully get mad at him. But at the same time, it's like, dude, what did my neighbors do? But let's see. Damane? Why are there action lines above? Shishi, but did you not do anything? What? They're both up? Shishi, but what were you cooking? Were you cooking straight water? Were you boiling water? With cold? There was like no flames? Why are they both so unharmed? Is her arm destroyed? Please tell me at least her metal arm is destroyed or something. She's just back. Amani, you're gone. You cut. She she was on the ground. Who can? Oh, so Rocky's still in the bathroom. Weird cook. Because Shin's down. I think mask guy. T total. I, I get the. I, forget, I think it's like a T that the girl's name starts with. And Saba. I think they all left, or at least like got him out of there. Kashima's not gonna be any help. Gaku's an enemy. Like we cooked. Um, she she but literally. Has to get up right now, or else we are genuinely cooked. Why is she fine? Okay, she's not fine. She took damage, but jeez, Amani, this now is not the time. You are not gonna be cooking right now, Amani. You are cooked, bro. I think they got your number, Bucko. I think they went bring, 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 and they got your number, Bucko. You are in danger. <laughs> My apologies. My apologies for speaking in such a man. I thought you were still on me hold up in that bathroom. Okay, I see it, I see it, I see it. And you know what? I thought she was going to show up with Amane anyway. So it took her. But okay. Now we're going to get another Order 2v1 scenario. I mean, I guess Amane's there too. But like, also Rocky's showing up. All right. Interesting though. I could have sworn, didn't her... Saw get bro is she like manually spinning her saw? <laughs> Cause I thought I thought um Saba destroyed it with his ice grenade thing that Shin ended up using in Totoma. Maybe I'm misremembering though. It it wouldn't surprise me. My memory's clearly not that good. Let's say. Oh, but look at Kuminomi dodge it. Funny thing is though, it doesn't look like she needed to dodge it. She just jumps. Let's see. Huh? Watch out, Kuminomi! There's someone to Okay, I'll give it. I'll give him this. He may be the most genuinely deranged, but he's also the most hilarious of all the orphanage kids. I don't know. He's just so he, like he. He's always put in some of the worst situations so far. He is like arguably one of the coolest abilities. I think Kumanomi's is still cooler because I, I really like the way she uses magnetism. But like 
Man can make lightsabers, breathe actual streams of fire and all that stuff, but he's consistently getting done dirty. Thrown through buildings, grabbed by the collar, sliced up by Amane, <laughs> getting dropped into the ground like a cartoon character. Like, dog, what? <laughs> Carolina Reaper, bro. This ain't your story, bucko, I can tell that. Golly, Amane's even confused. Clatter. right now what waste did we actually just off him there's no way we're putting him back together like that my word what in the who had that on their bingo cards was it me i was just talking about how all these characters have potential i want them to live he's not living that's his arm that's his other arm. That's his leg. I don't even see his other leg. That's his upper body. That man's cooked. Sweet mother. Y'all. I, th I think we I think we got to knock Shishiba down a couple spots. I, th I, th I get he was a little bit fatigued. But. No damage. Doki. She one shot him in four panels. Does this count as getting off screen? I think this should count as getting off screen. <laughs> we don't even see the fight. <laughs> what? We actually just tried. I'll admit, if we had to sacrifice any of the Orphanage kids, it would have been Carolina Reaper, despite me liking his power set. But, like, oh my word. After all that. What did he say? Wait, what did that? Now that's some dramatic irony. What did he just say? In a small, dark room, I'll carve you up into little pieces while you're still alive. What happened? A small, dark room, cut into pieces while he was still alive. Yo! Suzuki said, say you're crazy. What? We actually stopped, bro. Golly! Gee willikers, fellas. I'm blown away. Mmm, she's looking so devious. And she should be mostly fresh, too. She should definitely, she should su be supremely fresh when you think about it. Because, like, what she do? Fight some low tiers? Like, and remember, Shin, Seba, Mass Kid, I, I will always forget the name. But, actually, I think both of their names are Seba. I think Seba's their last name. But regardless, like, they didn't beat her. They, like, scared her. <laughs> because they broke her saw. And she thought she saw a ghost, and she, as she should have said, she's a country girl and doesn't, I guess, believes in, like, mysticism and stuff like that. And obviously, in a world like Sacramento Days, where everyone's, like, superhuman, I can completely understand believing in mysticism. But, like, she should be crazy fresh. And Kuminomi, she's at bare minimum fatigued. And now she's fighting the 1v1? Oh, no. Yeah, she's cooked. Kuminomi, Kuminomi. And if that saw, if that saw she has is not magnetic, if that thing's made out of any non-magnetic metal... Kuminomi, even Kuminomi's like. Let's see. Oh, Soragi. Poor Mr. Shishiba. Hang on one minute. I'll be right back. Don't die. Aww. She can't. No, wait! Wrong one! Wrong one! Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, was he. No, he was he there earlier? Is that why she's tweaking out of. No, not Amane! Did you do this to Mr. Shishiba? What, what, what about, I mean, I guess he had a weapon on him. I guess, maybe. But, like, do, do, does he look like, I mean, like, maybe, I guess you can't always read strength. This is, like, Dragon Ball, where you can, like, send someone's key or something. But, Tart, Amane, no. <laughs> Amane, wrong place, wrong time, bro. You should have stepped away from that hole. You should have stepped away from Jijiba. And in a way, technically, he did. Let's see. What's with this chick? Kuminomi, run. Did you see how she did? You gotta pick up Reaper's body parts and hope you can put them back together, like all like all the King's Men putting together Humpty Dumpty. But they failed at that. And I think you're failing at putting Reaper back together. You gotta go. Uh oh, she's furious. Oh, so rocky. No, ready to die. Oh, so right. Listen to Shishiba. 
Like, come on now. I mean, I get it. But darn. You know what? You kind of have to do that, though. Because, like, if, if she just, like, came in and low diff Kuminomi, we, we'd be cooked. But, like, there's no way we're off on Amane right now. Right? There's, there's no way we're off on Amane right now. What? And we're cutting away? Oh, we're cutting away to peak. Never mind. I don't care. <laughs> never mind. I was going to be so mad. I was like, why are we cutting away now? But never mind. Peak is restored. Amane? You're not a main character, but you're a prevalent side character, bro. You ain't a deuteragonist. You ain't, your name ain't Shin. And your name ain't on the manga, like Sakamoto. But I think you're safe, Bucko. I think you're safe. You probably won't get multi-pieced. I don't think so. I think you're a little bit too important for that. We still have the whole Yotsumoto plotline and the Shishiba plotline and the character of them. So I think you're safe. I still can't get over the fact that Osaraki just one-shot Carolina Reaper. What? That's crazy. But we're cutting back to peak fiction. <laughs> Let's see. In the storage vault below the museum. <laughs> Nagamo's just like, ah, light. <laughs> Let's see. That laceration should have penetrated his heart. Why isn't he dead? <laughs> but well, here's the you know what? I, I'll admit, I kind of don't get this. But you know what? Someone, I kind of do. I, I do in the sense of Nagamo's mindset and assassin training. My, my always thought is, right, technically, we are not our flesh. I mean, we are our flashes, and you can identify me as that guy with a pencil by the way that I look and the way that I sound and stuff like that. Those are the people who don't watch the videos who just listen to the videos. You, you can always tell that by how I sound. But, like, we're our brains. You can fix a broken heart, literally. Like, like you can actually swap out hearts, and that still be you. You can swap out lungs, and that still be you. Kidneys. May not legs, but like you can swap out massive, important organs. But the one thing you can't swap out is a brain. So I never got why people don't go for that, like generally. But at the same time, there is the skull. And in this case, attacking the heart, which is also a wider area, does make sense. And with the skull being thicker than, like, I think our. Our heart is towards the center of our chest, which technically means it's going by the sternum, but I think the sternum's only in the front. Like, I think, yeah, it would be easier to just pierce the heart. And once again, Nagamo's a professional assassin. I'm a dude. So, like, <laughs> he knows better. Let's see. Why isn't he cooked? Nagamo. Nagamo, don't you get cooked, bro. Please! Uh, 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 chairman, help! <laughs> All of you look like such dopes. Oh, this is real. <clears throat> All of you look like such dopes. Unlike a certain fat, so we know, you haven't changed one bit. Look, even the chairman's like, that's not my little brother. What's happening? Nagumo. How boring. Yep, okay, so Rihanna's taking center stage. A cow? And we're ending. Ah, we're ending. Okay, so that's interesting. So it looks... Is, is, does Suzuki legit have two hearts? Is he like a seventhly sense demon or something? Does he have multiple organs? How is this happening? Is he... Is he Sukuna? Like, I'm like... Or did she Sukuna? Like, how is this happening? Like, if if she really got... Or they really got stabbed through the heart, shouldn't they? Shouldn't that be it? I don't know. But then again, maybe... Maybe Suzuki really is an orphanage kid and has, like extra weird body parts maybe his heart is in a typical location or he shifted there's gonna be that's interesting and it's true i never i forgot that sakamoto never informed nagumo about the whole dual body situation because it happened so fast so yeah now nagumo versus rion considering rion was kind of established to be the strongest at base like sakamoto is clearly meant to be the strongest of their trio traditionally nagumo definitely was consistently sold as the weakest but admittedly the smartest out of their group so, this is going to be interesting. Uh, Fatigue Nagumo versus a missing heart Uzuki. Or Rion. Intriguing, intriguing. Okay, okay. If you couldn't tell, this chapter was some gas. It was some gas. Okay, my toes? My toes? Curled. I <laughs> I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. The character conflict is fantastic. The character writing is fantastic. I will admit, I'm gonna put Shishiba on a little bit of a fraud watch because, like, darn dog, how they both get back up not two seconds afterwards? But Osuragi, she just shot up in my order rankings to the extreme. <laughs> That's so crazy to me. And now we're gonna get Osuragi versus Amane and Kumanomi. That's crazy. These two may actually have to team up. Shishiba struggles to explain the situation and then just then to jump Kumanomi 
And then we're gonna get this. We're gonna get Rion versus Nagumo. Overall, very, very W channel. Worth the two week wait. I'll say that. I'll say that. However, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave Broken Heart in the comment section down below. And to thank you so much for watching, please do leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do happen to have a Patreon below where you can support me for as low as one, get them one, don't mind. You things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also want to become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks will include the live reactions to every other series that I review, add free variations of all my videos, and if you become a $25 patron or a $25 member, you can order whatever video you want. Also, if you want to order a video, give thanks to your boy, do a little something, something. I got a co fi link link down below where you can make any request you want but now as to thank you so much for watching once again and i hope you guys have a wonderful day this is that with a pencil writing off I would like to give a thank you to all three dollar members. So Connor plays Greyhound, Akids Void, Astro, Eternal Flame, Quarenti Atala, Red Wolf 4765, G Prosper, and Paris Arnold. And I'd like to give a thank you to our five dollar patrons: Steron, Sean, Midnight Lord 21, Marcus, Kevin, and Igneo. And I'd like to give a big old thank you to our seven dollar members: Autumn Mornings, Lazo, and Sick Addiction. And I'd like to give a big old thank you to our $10 members, Banana Phone and Robbie Uchiha. And I'd like to give a gargantuan thank you to our $10 patrons, Panda Goat, Joaquin, Joaquin, and iDemoKami. And I'd like to give a giga gargantuan scrumdilly thank you to our $25 patron, China Doll 9 And I'd like to give another giga gargantuan gargantuan I have no idea what that word was. Thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.